Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the GFS Ensembles and we'll also have a look at the UK Met Office run as well. It does look like we can have a mixed bag really for the rest of September. We've of course had a very warm start with that heat wave earlier this week and it does look like over the coming weeks there's still the potential we could be seeing some nice fine hot weather but at the same time, there could be some stormy weather and some unsettled weather within it. We're going to have a bit of a battleground going on with high pressure to our east, lower pressure out in the Atlantic. Um, and at this stage, it's un we're unsure which one is going to be winning out. Um, but regardless, it doesn't look like anything too cold is coming up. Um, and it does look like it's going to be a very warm month overall, even if there is a bit of um, heavier rain here or there for the last few weeks. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And do remember to follow on Twitter as well. The link's in description. So if we do go through the latest GFS, you can see at the moment, we're sort of in between weather systems. We've got that low pressure that just brought thunderstorms over the last few days, clearing out to our east. We've got a relatively pleasant day for many areas. A bit of cloud around here or there, and a few showers, and a bit of persistent rain over Scotland. And we'll have a look at the live radar right at the end of the video. But it's been relatively decent, with temperatures recovering quite well um, into the low 20s. If you have a look at the upper air temperatures, it's not particularly cool, but it's not particularly warm. As we head through early this early next week, through Sunday and Monday, you do see we start to see low pressure trying to push in off the Atlantic. This does draw up some warmer air from the south for a time, and it could mean temperatures in the south actually is quite warm early next week, potentially low 20s once again. But you can see we keep getting this battleground situation with high pressure to our east. This big block out towards Scandinavia, Eastern Europe, and then low pressure trying to push in off the Atlantic. And what this will do is it will mean areas in the west and the north may see um, quite a bit of rain at times. Maybe see some stalling weather fronts, maybe some strong winds and some stormy weather. However, for the east and the south, because these low pressures are coming up against that high pressure, we do pull up southerly airflow. And that's not going to be remarkably hot, um, but it can be pretty decent. And you can see getting the temperatures to around 10 degrees 850 HPA in the south, which is pretty decent for sort of middle to end of September. And you can see this com completely sort of staying the same with high pressure towards Scandinavia and over towards Eastern Europe, low pressure at the Atlantic, trying to push in and continually getting pushed away by the low pressure. And we maintain this pattern of warm southerly winds. And of course, in the west, it may still be pretty unsettled um, and unfortunately a bit of rain and cloud but it shouldn't be particularly cold um, as you can see with the upper air temperatures are pretty decent and right towards the end of the run even at 300 hours really pulling up a proper southerly wind with some pretty warm upper air temperatures and I wouldn't be surprised to see temperatures getting into the low to mid 20s in this scenario and this goes all the way to the end of September and no real change with this really quite long fetch southerly wind this would provide a really quite hot spell um, if we were about a month or two ago and we would have um, quite a bit hotter air over towards Spain. But of course, as we're heading towards winter, the sun is getting weaker, especially in the north, or in the northern hemisphere. So it is meaning the temperatures towards Spain are just lowering and it does mean it's going to be difficult to be getting big, big temperatures in the UK. Um, so sort of low 20s, maybe 25 degrees, the best we can hope from this sort of scenario. But you can see we are blocking off these low pressure systems. Now, it can change. We could see these low pressure systems tumbling off the Atlantic and we could be going stormy and unsettled for all. But at this stage, it does look like we're in a battleground scenario. If we do have a look at the GM, see how that does compare. You can see we've got low pressure pushing across the country over the coming days with some showers potentially, and then we see that sort of battleground situation sort of um, arise. However, you can see right towards the end of the run, the GM, low pressure does break through, and you can see that block is a bit further eastwards and northwards than it was on the GFS. You can see we're going into a unsettled pattern, not particularly cold, but still unsettled, and, and is not going to be particularly nice towards day 10. You, however, you can see the differences between these models and that um, very subtle changes in the orientation of these lows and the block um, can change what sort of weather pattern we're seeing. But at this stage, it does look relatively um, warm, pretty decent with airflow tending to come from the south or the southwest and the potential for some unsettled weather, particularly in the west. But as you can see by the GM, it could spread eastwards as time goes on. If we do now have a look at the ECMWF, see that does compare, you can see 
We see a transient high pressure moving through between low pressure systems. And as we head towards um, sort of day 10, you can see again, we have a very similar pattern with a block out towards the east. A um, bit more transient um, on the east of the F with um, towards day 10, we're seeing proper high pressure over the top of the UK. And the jet stream powering down a little bit with still low pressure out in the Atlantic, but not quite as strong. We are pulling up once again. Southerly winds feeling pretty decent. You can see for the far southeast, really... We don't really see too much unsettled weather. Of course, there will be times of showers and the odd weather front moving through here or there. But it isn't looking like there's going to be a massive deluge, especially in the south and the east. For the west, it's difficult to say at this stage. And we have to, of course, look at the short range models when these sort of low pressures are more resolved. Um, as, of course, it all depends on how um, how sort of the low pressure interacts um, with the jet stream and whether it does slowly push in or and sort of the weather front stall or whether the weather fronts never make it anyway or if they do push through and sort of fizzle away it all depends on this sort of these things we can't really have a look at until we're a couple of days out so we'll have to keep an eye on it but in the west at this stage it isn't looking particularly encouraging but as i said it can change um but the favored weather especially will be in the south of the east over the coming weeks if we do have a look at the gfs ensembles we only currently have um, only about eight, nine days on the latest 12Z run. We'll go back to the 6Z in a minute. But as you can see at the moment, temperatures look like they're going to be above average in the far southeast. We can see it does look like generally things are going to be um, pretty, pretty decent, I must say. Um, in terms of temperatures, you can see there is some precipitation coming early this week as we see a trough move through. And there's continual shower risk. We say you can see above average temperatures. A lower than average, I'd really say, uh, shower uh, risk, because we can have real deluges this time of year. It's going to be decent um, in the south and the southeast. If we do have a look at the 6Z run, you can see generally in the longer term, we are above average in terms of temperatures. At least to around the 20th of September, it's looking pretty concrete. We're going to be above average. And you can see there is precipitation around, of course, but there's no massive deluges at this stage. Um, it looks a bit on and off, and in the longer term, there is more precipitation spikes, and there is more deviation within the ensembles in terms of temperatures. But it still it is looking not too bad for September. If we do have a look at the mean sea level pressure, you can see generally for the far southeast, around 1,020 millibars, which is a weak area of high pressure. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad in the far southeast. It should be pretty decent, really, um, with pretty nice um, nice conditions, potentially, with, um, with some hotter weather, potentially, beginning into low 20s when we do see sunshine. Um, and it, or even probably mid-20s as well. You can see in the longer term, though, there are some deeper lows trying to push in on some of the ensembles. And, of course, there's always that risk towards the last week of September. So it is too far, really, at this stage to make any concrete forecasts on it. But for the next sort of 10 days, it is looking pretty, pretty decent. If we do have a look at Glasgow, have a look at how that does compare... You can see for the 12Z run at the AM50 HP in temperature, generally around average, a bit up and down, and there is quite frequent precipitation spikes. No massive deluges already until around 17th, 18th of September, but a lot of small precipitation spikes, so a lot of showers um, coming in for Scotland, and up and down temperatures, symbolic of sort of a, a westerly sort of flow um, with cooler and warm fronts moving through. If we go back to the 6 ad run and have a look at the 850 HP and, uh, and precipitation, you can see quite unsettled in the longer term. You can see a lot of precipitation spikes, quite considerably more than we saw in London. You can see civil temperatures are above average, so it does look like it will probably be coming out as a warmer than average month. But um, uh, maybe in the west and the north, with all the rain and the cloud, it could suppress temperatures a little bit more than we would hope with these upper air conditions. Um, and it does look like pretty miserable um, in the in Scotland and the West in general in the longer term. It could be a scenario where the south and the southeast comes off, um, and where the east as well comes off with a quite a nice month. Whereas in the West, um, it's a proper um, unpleasant sort of autumnal few weeks. So we'll have to keep an eye on how it does develop. But at this stage, it does look like it's going to be this battleground scenario. If we do have a look at the mean sea level pressure, you can see generally... Things are around 1,020 millibars, so a weak area of high pressure over the next sort of week or so. But then when that battleground situation really starts to ramp up with deep areas of low pressure, you can see slowly 
there is the signal for a lower pressure to push in around sort of 17 to 18 September, uh, with more and more ensemble members trending to around 1,010 millibars, and even deeper than that in the longer term. And in general, because we have westerly winds, whether we do have higher pressure, there's always the higher shower risk as we have air coming in off the moist Atlantic with the south or southwesterly winds, potentially, of course, with the weather fronts pushing in wherever we do see some systems develop. So we'll have to keep an eye on it, of course, but at this stage it does definitely look like favoured for best for the best weather in the south and east, um, potentially in the north and the west, the more miserable weather, potentially. If we now finally have a look at the UK Met Office run, having a look at what sort of we could be seeing over the coming days, you can see at the moment we've had that heavier rain pushing through Scotland and widespread showers throughout today. Um, hasn't been as widespread as which has been seen in this UK Met Office run, as I'll show you in the live radar in a minute. Hasn't been particularly widespread, but still a few showers around. Through Sunday, potential for some persistent rain to push into the far southwest, into southern Ireland, potentially Wales. But it is slowly getting sort of fizzled away as it tries to push in, as it sort of fades away. And then we could see some more persistent rain push up as that weather front eventually pushes through through Monday nights into Tuesday for all areas, seeing some more persistent rain. Um, as we do see that small low pressure system move through. Um, and beyond that, it does look generally dry for through Wednesday and Thursday. But you can see weather fronts pushing into the west. And you can see why I say in the north and the west could be quite uh, miserable with heavy rain. For the south and the southeast, it's looking pretty decent with drier weather. If we do have a, the max temperatures, you can see this afternoon with still temperatures getting into the low 20s, potentially in the east, but a bit cooler for the west and the north. Through Sunday... You can see temperatures potentially getting to around 20, 21 degrees in London or the far southeast. Once again, cooler in the north and the west and where we do have that weather front trying to push through. So for, through Sunday and Monday, it's going to, of course, bring temperatures down. Monday, a bit cooler for all, but still maybe 20, 21 degrees in the far southeast where we see cloud breaks um, and it could feel pretty decent there. And finally, through Tuesday, you can see temperatures... Maybe recovering to around 20, 21, 22 degrees, of course, with that weather front that's moving in, it's going to have a warmer sector, so it's going to have warmer air, even though it's going to be bringing cloud and um, rain. By Wednesday, widely, again, mid to, um, low 20s, maybe 21, 22 degrees potentially in England and Wales, a bit cooler in Scotland, of course, so we do have those weather fronts pushing in, which are going to drag temperatures down. You can see only 12, 13 degrees at best in Scotland. Whereas for the southeast, maybe 23 degrees. And as, as I said, with this background situation, we could be seeing big splits like this. If we do finally have a look at the live radar from the Weather Channel, um, showing the current sort of shower scenario we do have. Um, as it does load in. So you can see at the moment we do have that persistent rain sort of fizzling away through northern Scotland with still some showers around. And of course, we... Um, have a few showers here or there, but you can see it's nowhere near as widespread as the UK Met Office run had made out to be. So we'll have to keep a, a, an eye on what, whether these models do accurately forecast the showers over the coming days. But at this stage, it does look like there'll be a few showers over the coming days. Some more persistent rain pushing into the west and potentially for all areas through Monday and Tuesday. Um, and I know a lot of people probably would um, enjoy some heavier rain at this time for the gardens. Um, but soon it may become the norm as we head into autumn and winter with heavier rain and uh, westerly winds probably returning um, as we head into the autumn period. But for now, high pressure is trying to hold off over towards Scandinavia and Europe. And that could mean we still could see temperatures relatively decent in the south and east, whereas for the north and west, it does look like autumn will be arriving with wet and windy weather. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.